Good afternoon, traders. Welcome to Master Traders Educational Webinar today. I'm Dan Gibby, Chief Option Strategist, and I'm here with my partner and good friend, Greg Capra, who's one of the most phenomenal technicians that I know in my life. And that's why he's gonna be, uh, you know, bantering with me back and forth because we both have such a passion for our business of trading some stocks and options. And today's topic, as you can see, is we're going to be reviewing Tasty Trades option trading um, approach uh, without charts. And, and that's a very big difference. We agree on many things in trading options, but this is a huge, huge difference. And I don't care what background you're from in trading options or what your current methodology is, I promise you today that we are going to enlighten you and show you how our approach is going to dramatically increase your odds of success. So let's begin. Feel free to type in any questions here, Greg, and I will do our best to catch up with them. And if we miss any, feel free to email us at the end. Here we go. There's many, there's many ways to succeed in the market. I believe that any objective approach that you can uh, duplicate over time and, and consistently, not with luck, but consistently have an objective method to pull money out of the markets, you're a successful trader. Unfortunately, and well, fortunately for Greg and me, actually, we get, we get hundreds of emails about just the garbage education out there. And, and they're like, we are so glad to have found you all after so many years and, and they're ready to get on the right track. That's the master trader objective approach. Tasty Trade, they have, they have an amazing financial network. They have a huge following and they, have, they crunch amazing statistics. They have a huge research team, uh, but they trade much differently than us. And that's what we're going to explore today that if you've been with them for a while, then again, the conclusion of this is adding the master trader approach with chart analysis is going to dramatically increase your odds of success. That is my promise to you today. We've both been in the business for decades. Uh, Greg was the, uh, the pine, I call him the pioneer of, of the direct access technical analysis. He started in the, in the early to mid uh, 1990s. Um, I did also, but you know, with a Schwab account, reading the Wall Street Journal. And Greg was on ground floor zero, uh, figuring out what makes prices move, uh, understanding chart analysis, uh, intermarket analysis, and, and he is phenomenal. And so we're going to show you uh, again many examples where. Uh, you're going to see it in, in black and white. And then, you know, I, I get a lot of trades emailed to me that that come from other services. And I don't know what their methodology is, but if you put it through a screen of technical analysis with a bias, you can quickly, quickly eliminate that trade opportunity as being extremely low odds. Greg was the, the founder of pristine.com back in the, in the 90s. Uh, he has taught, you know, we've both taught thousands of traders. Uh, he, he consults for hedge fund managers, market makers, the prop traders. We, you know, he, he, I'll let him <laughs> say a few words in a moment here, but uh, people follow him and, and so do I. I, I'm an expert in option trading, but the two of us got together a couple of years. Well, we've been working together for over 20 years. I'd learned technical analysis sitting right next to him in his office in, in uh, New York. Uh, but I have the passion for option trading because I think it's easier to trade than stocks, both what we call directional trades and income trades. We'll get into that shortly. But using options properly, you can stack the odds in your favor to make it a higher probability trade than trading stocks alone. 
I know X, so I learned technical analysis through Greg. I've worked with a, a worldwide proprietary hedge fund, uh, portfolio management with stock and options. We, we both have a consulting division at Master Trader where we uh, work with, with whoever needs our services, high hedge funds, high net worth individuals, and we're there to, uh, to help you master better uh, returns. Again, listening here today, Tasty Trade and others, big following, uh, a mechanical approach. And our number one goal here today is to put more money in your pocket. And that's by using, and we're going to show you just a, a few of the technical analysis skills and concepts that we teach in Master Trader Strategies that you will walk away with today in the next hour, hour and 15 minutes. So regardless of what, uh, what your current strategy is, it is going to be increased here shortly. So, so let's keep going. And then at the end, so we're gonna teach you some great stuff here today, ask questions, but at the end, we're gonna also share, um, you know, we're gonna give you a little gift. Hey, Greg, I didn't give you a few words to uh, say hello. How are you doing today? Why don't you um, say hello? <laughs> hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the event. And uh, All right. Yeah. He'll uh, say hello in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking, Dan. I don't think Dan's probably Tasty got Tasty Trade has a what they call a mathematical or mechanical approach to the markets. They do not believe in chart analysis whatsoever. So they don't have a bias on direction, but when they enter a trade, we are exactly opposite. If we don't have a bias on the trade, we have this saying, no compelling pattern, no trade. End of story, go on to, go on to the next uh, trade opportunity. There's another bus coming by. They trade with the math. They are they're quantitative. They produce uh, you know impressive research that says, "Hey, look at this beautiful math." With their PhDs, they look at the option Greeks. We'll take a a, a quick review of some of them and then show you how we uh, use them. But you're also going to see at Master Trader, we believe in the Kiss method. Uh, Greg, Dan must have <laughs> muted. Yeah, exactly. So, um, what, what, we all know what the KISS method is, right? Keep it simple. There, we show you and teach you an objective approach that you can follow, and then it's just a matter of seasoning after that. There's no... we. You'll never hear us use the word, we got a master trader, proprietary, a GAN square, purple oscillator that I'm going to sell you half price for $3,000 today. That is not our style. We have a very objective approach. We, then we, once we're in the trade, we simply manage in between using the same master trader strategies based upon how the underlying is working. The master trader strategies work towards anything that can be charted based upon supply and demand. What is that? Stocks, commodities, futures, currencies, even a bag of rocks. If you, if you can show me prints of bags of rocks being sold, I will print you a chart and give you a bias of whether that's going up or down. Tasty trade. The, 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 these are their words. Picking direction is a coin flip. A coin flip is 50%. Flip a coin, 50% heads or tails. They say nobody can predict market direction. And I got to get Greg to say hello. So if you aren't unmuted yet, Greg, what do you say to that comment right there? Can you predict market direction with any reasonable degree of certainty? I don't know if you can hear me, Dan. I started to speak before. That's why I said I thought. Greg still doesn't want to talk to me today. Well, 
Dan, guys, can you hear uh, me? Tell, right. tell, tell <laughs> Dan. That. He, can, uh, he can interrupt whenever he wants. I don't even know what this means. Oh, I have you muted? Yes. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> yes. yes, Dan, you have your thing muted. Okay, you know, hey, you know me with technology. Come on, I'm an option trader, not a not a techie. All right, <laughs> yes. all right. Sorry about that, folks. Greg, can you predict market direction with an above average degree of certainty? At times, yes. It's not a hundred. I'm not a hundred percent. Sometimes it's so accurate, I scare myself. But. Uh, there are times when it's very confusing and I get confused because the charts are confusing. In other words, they're slopping up and down sideways, overlapping. And, you know, I know what to do. And the message tells me to stand aside and, and do nothing. And exactly. But, but Greg and I, we, we kind of just have this saying that when we're scanning on charts and we find something, it, when we both say that that's a no brainer, that means the odds are staggering in our side of, of picking market direction. So Greg and I 100% disagree with this statement that picking direction is a coin flip. And I promise you, 99% of you should come to the same conclusion at the end of this presentation. So, you know, buckle your seatbelts. I don't even know what this means. Stocks are just standard, normal variables, and there's no way to predict whether they'll go up. And what is a standard, normal variable? I don't, I don't even want to know. Tasty Trade has a morning email called the Cherry Bomb, and they give trade recommendations. And but every one, it's not a, a trade idea, but they preface it with if you think X Y Z is going to go up or down. Well, oh, how do you form that bias of something's going up or down if, if you can't look at a chart? I, I guess maybe fundamentals, somebody could have a bias that Microsoft's going higher, that, that's fine. But even to those traders, I, I would implore them to use technical analysis to overlay on their fundamental trading also. It's our view, I mean, they got great research that the research is misleading. You, you, you can't rely on those conclusions without a proper bias. And I'm gonna show you examples of that. Here's our approach. It's this simple. We're looking for compelling patterns. What is a compelling pattern? Well, we teach that of course, and I'm gonna show you a number of them in, in this webinar today. We want multiple time frames to be supportive of it. And then we simply enter and manage in between. Greg, I'll let, we have a slide here on techno fundamental analysis and market internals. And um, I'll let him talk about that. So Tasty Trade says picking directions a, corn, a coin flip. Well, then query why we have an 85% success rate in picking direction on both our directional trades and income trades. Again, income trades is where we're just selling options, calling a short-term top or bottom, and we'll give you many examples of that. Um, Greg, yeah, shoot if you want. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just wanted to say that, you know, some people that are, that are watching, and there are lots in here that might say, well, why are you picking on Tasty Trade? You know, they have some good stuff out there. I would say, yeah, they do. But you know what? Why? Because you know the name. And there, it's not that they approach options differently than a lot of other options traders, but we wanted to get your attention. And so we put the name out there to show you that if you take – option trading strategies and option trading strategies are no different as to who's doing them, right? So a bear call spread is the same in any bear call spread, but when you add charts to it, well, now you've put, you know, things in, in your favor so much more than just relying on the Greeks. 
Uh, Greg, let me interrupt you, though. You and I say that. But what about the non-believers? They'll say, I totally disagree. And uh, again, we're going to prove, you know, that concept wrong today. But yeah, sure. Because look, and, and people say, well, why? What makes your way of doing it better than someone else's? And so I say, well, just sit back, watch and listen. And if this sounds like common sense to you and there's this light bulb moment as we talk about them, meaning ah, aha moment, however you want to say it. I mean, if it just has common sense, you should consider it and then go ahead and look at it on your own over and over again and then prove it to yourself. Don't take anybody's word, you know, for what you should do with your money. Excellent. And, you know, I've been trading options, you know, 22, three years, whatever. And, and if somebody wants to try to teach me a new trick, then show me, I'll I'll listen. Uh, Yeah. You can't be stubborn in your approach. So I agree. If somebody's going to show you something that's going to eliminate 80% of your losses and and increase the gains, then I think you're, you're pretty naive not to listen. And that's why we're here today. So let's continue. Yeah. And one second before you go on with that, because you said something about their statistical analysis being misleading. And, you know, that was something that I said to you some time ago, because when when you see someone that giving you numbers, it, it's really hard to argue with numbers because, you know, it's math. But when you you see that it doesn't work, it's like, what's going on here? And so when you start combining technical analysis with option strategies, you understand why it's misleading. So you can't just say that, you know, and you'll talk about this, I'm sure, Dan, why you can't just say high implied volatility is a reason to do something. Uh, So I'll just let you continue as you show the charts, which kind of, you know, no, no, you're, you're words. Right, right, right. No, you're exactly right. No, I'm, I'm not questioning their PhD saying you, you know, did the wrong data set, you ran the wrong algorithm, whatever. I'm saying that if you don't have an assumption in your research before you crunch those numbers, then the results, you know, bad input is bad output. And, and I have a, a perfect example for you coming up. Well, this is, so, so what the heck is technical analysis? We're looking at price action, trends, patterns to predict future market direction. You might ask, why on earth would that work? Let's talk about it. Each candlestick on any time frame, a candlestick measures the high, the low, the open, and the close. Then we combine those candlesticks with patterns and it shows us supply and demand on anything, like we said, that you can be charted based on that, that moves. So it's our opinion and well, it's a fact actually, that these candlesticks in patterns, so, so, so I get, you know, internalize this it reflects the true collective beliefs of all market participants at any point in time. A a given five minute period, five week period. And that's why we say charts don't lie. People lie, analysts lie. Uh, News people would like to just feed you fear and greed to get high ratings but that's all garbage. The charts don't lie. Greg, you had this wonderful quote in, in our green trading room. So why don't, why don't you explain it? Um, Your name's on. <laughs> I'm just reading the slide there, but I, someone had posted a question that I wanted to respond to as, as well, but yeah, I mean, exactly. Patterns are a picture of psychology and motion fueled by money. The reason being, you and I and everyone else are displaying for the world to see our opinion. You know, whether we're right or wrong in, in the moment, no, no one knows. But uh, the reason we look at charts is, is because people are putting their money at risk. 
And so I don't know who I could see who posted it, but it was posted in the Q and a uh, about tasty trade doesn't put great emphasis on Greeks. I hear them talk about that a lot. When I used to listen to them, uh, they look at numbers, right? So numbers are on charts and to say candlesticks are pretty subjective and not, not to, uh, you know, put down what you're saying here. They're not really subjective. They're just, you don't know how to read them. It, it, correct. No, no, no. And that is the subject. They, the charts themselves are objective. They are what they are, but yes, the interpretation of them is subjective. And, and, you know, that's why there's different people teaching different forms of technical analysis. And, you know, why we think ours is, is, is the best. Well, it's because people don't understand that every candle pattern works. And if you don't know how to combine it with multiple time frames, support, resistance, and trends, there are, there are patterns that aren't supposed to work. But the majorities that talk about them don't incorporate that or they don't talk about failed patterns. So it's about understanding how to combine concepts, not just to say, hey, that, that's a dark, a dark cloud cover and it's supposed to do this. If you look at it that way, sure, you could say it's subjective. Okay, so that's a perfect lead into this slide. This is what we call our, our bullish money patterns. Now, again, we would look at multiple time frames and go through our trade uh, checklist, you know, liquidity and market internals, broader markets, sector, et cetera, relative strength. But these are beautiful pictures, all seven of them here, of bullish patterns that I think you or I would put our money on with high confidence that these are, are bullish patterns of money, the bull is in control. You know, this isn't a technical analysis session here today, but these are objective pictures of, of, of bullishness. We're going to be talking a little bit about, you know, patterns and trading stocks and options, but one trade of ours is, is called the bull put credit spread and Tasty Trade does it. Many other um, folks do it, but we do it with excellent precision using the charts and patterns like this. So we find pictures of bullishness and then we want to sell a put option under support by a further out of the money put just to define our risk and make it less you know, money intensive at the brokerage firm. And the difference of those two numbers is a credit, meaning money is coming in to our brokerage account. So we teach how to find these patterns, how to, put, how to sell these bull put credit spreads and the money that you put in your brokerage account, as long as this green line holds at expiration, that money you put in your account is 100% profit. Here's our keep it simple, stupid. Uh, uptrend, downtrend, what we're looking for to put on bullish trades in an uptrend is a pullback to support and pictures of buying. Notice that there's not one single term of, of Harami or, or anything like that. We teach how to read these candlesticks to show you what the pattern looks like, where to get on board and what option strategy to, uh, to deploy. Let's look at a couple of charts here. This is a, a master trader buy setup and a breakout. Starting over here, little Iggy, it's been in a sideways trend. Now notice on these charts, because I'm going to show you a number of them. At master trader, we use simple, clean, candlesticks with three different moving averages, the 20, 50, and 200, just to speed up the process of analysis, although they're not needed. We throw volume on there. And this is sufficient. This is all the information you need to make buy or sell decisions or stay away decisions. This was a, this, all of this was stay away. There's nothing that interests me in this sideways trend other than, you know, maybe a condor put spread or something like that. 
Now I have a little bottoming tail. I have huge volume. And this is what Master Trader calls a wide range bar. Wide range breakout bar from consolidation is strength. Now we would sell a put spread on this with incredibly high confidence that the low of this bottoming tail is going to hold. But if you were just looking at statistics and not this chart, and you sold, let's just say an iron condor at the end of this bar, you are in for pain on the bearish side of that trade. Then it went sideways here for a couple of weeks a concept we teach, consolidation over time versus retracement to support. Then it broke out again on volume. That's, that's what we call commitment. This is our master trader buy setup. Wait for our pictures of buying. And we have our bottoming tails here after four red bars, bottoming tail, green bar, on minor support, and that's where we enter. So we would have both bullish stock and option uh, trades uh, right, right there on that master trader buy setup for directional and, and the income. Now, just take a look at this Dollar Tree. If, if somebody wants to tell you that charts don't work and they don't show the collective beliefs of where demand is for Dollar Tree on this multi-month pattern, then they're just fooling themselves. I mean, what does this chart show? It shows that every time Dollar Tree came down here to this $80 area, people went to the marketplace to buy it. That's what we call demand. That's what creates major support. That doesn't mean we want to buy it right there. We're still looking for a pattern. Uh, you know, here's what we call a one, two, three, which we don't have time to get into today. But once it broke out, it's now in a new uptrend. It was consolidating for a couple months in a sideways trend. And yes, we can have different credit spread trade opportunities. Um, but once it broke out, then we are looking for a bullish directional option trade. And if you were not stopping out of a bearish option trade, then you are ignoring uh, objective reality. Here's another principle of tasty trades. The probability of something happening is simply to look at the delta. Now, there's different ways to look at delta, but let's just keep it simple for today. They believe, so if you look at a delta, that means that there's a that percent chance that it's going to expire in or out of the money. Tasty Trade believes that shorting a 30 delta put, for example, or 30 delta call, regardless of looking at the chart pattern, has the same 70% chance of expiring worthless because the delta means it's the chance of ex expiring in the money. Therefore, out of the money is a one minus that. But there's their 70%. And then they, they use their mechanical method to put trades around that assumption. But step back, folks. When you pull up an option quote screen, though they're, they're, those quotes are made by supply and demand, and you have different black shoals or modified black shoals where the market makers will you know, have a quote there, but then supply and demand is the true barometer of what those things are trading at. They are pattern agnostic. Okay, do you understand that? Those quotes have no clue what the underlying is doing. And so out of the money options with the same delta, they're generally the same 
kind of price except for the skew and you know typically puts are a little higher just because of the risk for the downside although they can have a skew to the upside with greed when when you know you have a hot issue rallying i'm going to show you an example or two right now to to demonstrate how inaccurate this statement is with a proper chart bias it is ludicrous to suggest that all 30 deltas should be treated the same. Master Trader has what's called a wide range igniting bar pattern and a wide range ending pattern. <clears throat> this is a tasty trade slide, um, you know, use of math. And, and I love the heading there. It gets no simpler. Delta is the first derivative of the model with respect to price. And then <laughs> the presenter, the, the, this, this first question here is the presenter's question. Will this help people trade better? And he said, no, probably not. This is our view. And this, <laughs> Greg, this is your view. <laughs> Does it, Greg? Greg is, you know, he, he loves, he's the chartist and he likes simplicity. He doesn't want to be bothered with Greeks and, and complication. So here's what Greg says. Hey, is a chart going up, down or sideways? Is it a directional or an income trade? Are the spreads tight and do we have good juice? And how much, how many days to expiration? That's what we focus on in simplicity in selling and trading options. This one chart, NSC, has two beautiful examples of wide range igniting. First one here. We're in an uptrend. We have rising 20, rising 50 period moving average. This is a concept we teach, a bearish gap that is negated. This ugly gap down ripped through resistance engulfing this red bar. If you were to sell a $30, I'm sorry, 30 delta call spread on that, you are in for pain. But if you recognize this pattern and this bar and this simplicity, you should only be focusing on selling a put spread. You take the low of this bar, 155, and we, we obviously teach you what spread, how many days to go out, what is an adequate credit for the risk, but we would be selling a 155, um, maybe 145 put spread, and then we just manage in between. And you can see this one would have expired worthless. Now up here, I'm gonna show you on another slide. We, we were actually in this. On this green bar, we sold a put spread and it was going sideways. So we actually made money over time here through time decay, but we took our stop. We at Master Trader, if a pattern fails, we're on to the next one. I said 85% success rate. I didn't say 99 or 100. If anybody does, you should run because they are misleading uh, snake oil salesmen. This is a wide range igniting now to the downside. This stock actually went like, I think to 135. This, this was an ugly, this is a bearish consolidation. That's a beautiful continuation pattern lower. This one, this is old Boeing. This is a bullish trend on multiple time frames. Greg, you you love the uh, you know the oscillator folks. Why don't do you want to add a few words about old Boeing here? Um, well, for those that use oscillators, they really should consider how misleading they are. Meaning, uh, oscillator here probably stayed overbought as it went sideways. And, you know, that oscillators are based on overbought, oversold. 
which leads you to believe that, you know, if it's overbought, that it shouldn't be able to move up very much or oversold, it shouldn't be able to move down. And, you know, I've been there, done that. When that happened and you see it doesn't work, you start changing the settings to make it match the price action. And then you move on to something else and it doesn't work and you get confused. So, you know, the message has been the same since Dan started, get rid of the squiggly lines on the charts and just focus on the price action, you know, is it going up, down, or sideways? And, you know, is it doing it in multiple time frames? In this case, you know, we're looking at a daily. So is the daily and the weekly going up? And if it is, you know, just look for long setups. All right. Yeah. I mean, we, we could teach a whole, you know, seminar on this one chart of chart reading, bar analysis, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I remember there was a lot of people shorting um, call spreads on this earnings gap up saying, oh, that's an unsustainable gap. And then they, you know, they just get run over. So at Master Trader, we use market internals to, uh, to give us a heads up for um, swing type of trading tops and bottoms. We still rely on, on the uh, candlestick analysis uh, but these are some internals that Greg has developed. This is these are his charts. These are his lines. So, Greg, so let me ask you: What additional percent confidence do you think you have in using these internals? Well, first thing is I did not create that breadth internal at all, nor did I create a no, book no. call ratio. I just no, no, no. I meant the, I meant how the, to use them. The lines, right? The lines. So. Okay. The idea here is to look for the both of them to be in agreement with each other. And the reason I use them is that because it's historical information where I've looked back at decades of information that confirms that when they're in alignment, bottoming patterns will bottom, you know, the majority of the time and vice versa. Whereas when they're not in alignment, bottoming patterns have a higher tendency to fail. So like everything that we do, it's about combining multiple concepts. Is the daily chart in alignment with the weekly chart? Uh, is, you know, is it showing relative strength as well as, you know, show in an uptrend? So the more things you can put in your favor, the greater the, the odds of it working out. So sentiment being based on a put call ratio is just a moving average of, of that put call ratio. When it tells me that, what I call the wrong way option traders are betting that the market's going to go down and breath is at a historical extreme. The odds are that it's not going to go down. So now when I see the price pattern, I have a greater degree of confidence that it's going to work. So, exactly. you know, what we do, we look at the charts and because of human nature and not wanting to lose money, none of us do. You know, we look for additional confirmation. Now, how much confirmation do you want? Is it just a reversal bar? Or do you want to see it taken out the prior high where it's already moved up a considerable amount? I want to get in, you know, when the move starts. So isn't sentiment and breath indicators here oscillators? No, they're not. They're not oscillators because oscillators are based on the price action that you're looking at or you apply them to which makes them unnecessary. They're a derivative of what you're already looking at. Whereas while this moves between extremes, that sentiment, it's, it's based on what option traders are doing. Are they buying too many calls versus too many puts and vice versa? And breath is based on thousands of stocks. Are they, tr are they you know, trading up or are they trading down? And then based on... Uh, you know, without getting into in-depth explanation about how it's constructed, it's just telling me historically that all of these stocks have moved down to a historical extreme or, who ha or have moved up to a historical extreme. So if it's moved up to an historical extreme, the majority of those stocks that are being monitoring and option traders are betting that the market's going to go higher, I know historically that's not likely to happen. Awesome. And you could see, the, you know, when they're alignment, Greg said they both have to be. Look at these green things. Even though this looked like the bottom was going to fall out, that was a bottom. Uh, bottom, 
bottom, and this is where we use it to for option trading, that is a phenomenal time to sell put spreads. And that, that's one of our specialties uh, for our, you know, for our weekly options trader. And when you get paid a lot of money, because when volatility is high, we sell puts and they're overpriced and we get paid more for them. Let's continue. What is a directional versus income trade to master trader? Directional is when multiple time frames are in alignment and we want a big target. This thing's going to go five, 10, $15. In income trade is everything else. It could be a sloppy pattern. It could be uh, whatever the case, it's not a directional, but it warrants us selling a call or put or spread above or uh, below support, above resistance. And the money that we put into our brokerage account is worth the risk of the pattern. And we find these all the time. It's a little bit harder in lower volatility environments, but every single day we find these uh, directionals depends on the market environment. But the, those are our two go-tos in option trading. I mean, you see the little graphic here. We, we just believe that not looking at technicals when you're uh, option trading, whether it's directional or income, is like driving your car blindfolded. And so we said in the intro, I, I just don't know why any service or anybody watching this webinar right now would deny the the, the tremendous benefit of that. We, we just don't get it. And that's one of our gifts here to, for you today, for you to have this aha uh -uh moment. Little retailer here. This is a, it's probably on earnings, but I don't even care the reason of, of this gap. This is what we call a professional gap breakout. It broke out on the weekly. You've heard Greg and me talk about multiple time frame alignment. This is what we call a no-brainer a directional trade where we would put on bullish directionals, which we have a whole lot of those buying calls. We have diagonals. We have cover calls. We have call debit spreads. You know, we teach all of that stuff. But we also could sell a put spread on this. So all our directionals are also qualify for um, income trades also. Just to give you one example, but as I mentioned, I, I get emails all the time from folks uh, sending me these ideas and I just quickly dismiss them. This was last year. If you think that Apple might stay in a range, so that begs the question, what is your, whoever's listening, what is your determination for concluding that a particular issue is gonna stay range bound. I don't know, you've answered that yourself, but to master creator, it is 100% on the charts. So they say, if you think it's gonna be range bound, short and iron condor, they throw out their statistics here, 69% probability of making um, half maximum profit because you have positive time decay. Here's our keep it simple approach. Is it a compelling pattern on multiple time frames? Is it a directional or income trade? Is there good juice? And then we just go to the option tables to match our objectives. Let's take a look at what Apple was at the day of the recommendation. We start with a bias. This is a mat. This is Apple. Remember, wait, was it 230? This is a what we call a massive bearish head and shoulders breakdown, major resistance here, major. And it broke down and now they're saying, if you think it's gonna stay range bound. So they sold a, a, a far out of the money put spread and a out of the money call spread here we would be selling a call spread on this gap down day. We would sell a call spread here, the 225, 230 at major resistance. We would only do a, a, a condor, which is what this is, in a sideways consolidation. 
sideways. As you all recall, I forget how low Apple went, but uh, it, where did, I forget. What did it do? 150, 160? So this uh, put spread got, got smoked. And you could have easily prevented that loss, assuming you were in it, of course. Easily prevented it had you had a bias on the charts. Next principle, because this is one of my and Greg's favorite uh, concepts, shorting short-term expiring options. Tasty Trade believes, and this was another quote of theirs, retail traders, which is most of us, of short-term options have no edge because they have less predictability over the control of a specific outcome. Again, not even sure what that means. Let's continue. But they don't, they, they are adamant. You shall not short options with short expirations because of the Greek here called gamma. We don't care about what you call these things. All Gamma does is look at the speed of, of how much these stocks, you know, moving in your favor or against you. It's only a risk if you don't use technical analysis. To us, it's, it's moot because we're managing the position with the charts, folks. We position size it based upon our entry in the stop and it's either gonna win or if we get stopped out, even a stop out could be at a profit based upon, you know, if we've made money through time decay over time. If, you know, they say the other gains that you get from these other Greeks aren't worth it to us. It, it's totally worth it. And they want more room to adjust the positions that go against them. So their, their sweet spot is selling options with 45 days to expiration. And then when it gets around 21 days, they roll them out to further dated ones. Whereas we have, we have, we have a weekly options trader that, that specializes in selling options 10 days or less to expiration. This is one of their, you know, visuals showing, substantiating why they don't sell short-term options. So this blue line is time decay, which is referred to as theta. Theta falls off a cliff into expiration. Let's put that in more simple terms for the beginners. When you buy an option, it costs money because you are given the right to buy or sell stock at, at a given price, you know, in the future. So the option seller needs that money to give you the right that you're looking for. We call that like a melting ice cube. As the option expires into expiration, the value of that option falls off a cliff, as you see on this blue line. So we use chart analysis and we sell this rapidly expiring time decay. And I see Ladon here, he's one of our subscribers and in the green room, and that's one of his specialties. He, he does extremely well doing it. So this gamma line, yes, that's a textbook answer of gamma, is greatest of uh, the into expiration. I, that's a textbook answer, which you don't need to worry about if you follow the master trader strategy of, of selling options and credit spreads, because we have our stop based on the chart. Again, back to kind of common sense here. Ask yourself, if you're gonna make a prediction where you're going to be in the next few days, weeks, months, the next 10 minutes, what's the most accurate? The shorter, of course. So why not put on trades where we get paid for taking short-term risk with high probability setups? 
our strategies, you know, these option buyers, I don't know, again, the, the methodology of why they go to the marketplace and buy them, if they're just bad chart readers or if they're uh, buying on news or rumors or whatever the case, but we just like a hunter, we're looking for these setups that have good premiums. And we, if we get our chart set up, we take their money and we put on the trade and there's a very high probability of it uh, expiring worthless. And then we still just manage in between. I'll show you an example of one Ladon actually <laughs> found for us. Uh, you know, today we closed out. This is it, Avgo, Broadcom. This was in our weekend advisory letter, our weekly options traders you see here. Here was the adjustment today. This, this was um, uh, right, well here, I'll show you. So th everything starts with a pattern. I'm gonna keep drilling that on you. I don't, know, I don't know if this was earnings or good news. I don't care. It had huge institutional volume drove this stock. We call this a professional gap breakout. Topping tail was a little questionable, but we didn't enter on the topping tail bar. Count how many bars there are in here and it couldn't retrace lower. That is a fact of demand of people buying Avgo at, at, at 290 and above. When this broke out, so this red bar is today. I just grabbed this chart today. Yesterday, when it took out uh, this bar's high, we sold a 290. So this is support. We sold a put at $290. We bought a further out of the money put, and that's what's called a bull put credit spread. We took in 65 cents a share. So if you did a 10 lock, just using easy math, that's 650 bucks, hits your brokerage account immediately. Is in this five days to expiration. So we put on this trade yesterday, which was a Monday. It expires this Friday. Our stop loss is under this bottoming tail bar, maybe a dime or so below it. And we manage in between. If it expires worthless, just for you number people, this is how you calculate return on capital, rock. You take the premium you took in, 65 cents. This is what's gonna be required per share by your brokerage firm. Do I did the math for you. That's five, I mean, folks, look at that. You might say, oh, Dan, it's only 650 bucks. It's 5.5% return on the capital that your brokerage uh, held to put on a 10 lot on this trade. That it, for five days, if you annualize that, it's, it's just unimaginable. And when we sell options, we're profiting from a directional move. So it's on a bull, on a bull side. So when the stock goes up, we're able to buy this back cheaper. Time decay, so day by day, the melting ice cube, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're making money through time decay. And finally, Vega, you know, I, again, I don't want to get complicated at all, but just let's think of it real simply. When we sell volatility in high volatility environments and volatility contracts, simple, we make money on that too. So Ladon, hats off to you. <laughs> Ladon asked us in the green trading room today, hey, Dan, we can close this at a dime less than one, less than 24 hours after entry. And we make 84% of our max gain in one day. That's just an obvious trade management strategy we teach. I sent out an alert via telegram to our subscribers, close it and we're on to the next bus. Amazon here, we love selling options on expiration day. And in fact, people come into our green trading room like with a renewed sense of excitement. It's like, all right, this is option expiration Friday. Let's find some good setups. This was Amazon on earnings. So after earnings, volatility is really high. And we love doing these within the first couple hours of the day. Bearish, bearish gap. 
That's what we call a bearish island reversal. That's step one. Step two, we go to an intraday time frame to confirm the bias of the daily chart. If we get it, we see what the premium is and we put it on, place our stop and manage in between. This one we put on in the green trading room, right on this little noon afternoon breakdown. The concept we teach here, you know, a green bar ignored. And that was like a no brainer setup. But check this out, folks. We sold the $1,720 call options that expired in four hours. Greg, are you listening? I'm all ears, Dan. Okay, so you love when I ask you probability questions. You being the skilled technician, right where this arrow is pointing, what do you think the odds of this stock going above 1720 is in four hours? Zero. <laughs> okay, but I thought, <laughs> now do you see a hypothesis? <laughs> that I was baiting you a little bit, but I agree with you. But you remember the hypothesis of tasty trade is it's a coin flip. Nobody can predict direction. And you just said a hundred. I never say a hundred myself. I would have said 98. Well, it's based on a couple of things. It, it's Amazon. So nobody's going to buy Amazon, right? They may buy someone else. Um, and for four hours, you know, let's say, let's say there's a 0 0.040 risk of that happening. Right. I'll take that trade every time. Absolutely. So again, that's, you know, the purpose of today and showing our style and if people would incorporate charts. Now, if it's, well, Tasty Trade wouldn't have been in this because I just said they only short 45 days or out. But I'm quite, I'm, I'm talking about how we disagree with that assumption because these are some of our most profitable trades. And, and we call this a no-brainer. Um, it, it, that's a no-brainer trade. You're putting money in your pocket. Let's just use round numbers here and say this was 1650. So the stock would have to rally $70 in four hours for that to expire in the money. <clears throat> This is this actually was on Walmart, so it's, it's not this, but it's still I wanted to show you um, this concept of why we like selling short term premium. And these were real quotes at the time on Walmart. If you sold this put spread, the 9390, whatever date this was, it doesn't matter, five days to expiration you take in 61 cents credit. So if you divide um, 61 by five, that's an average of 12.2 cents a day of extrinsic value um, decay. Now, what if you went another week out? You're only getting 70 cents. So folks, can you use a little bit of common sense here? I, I don't mean that derogatory at all. I mean, the numbers jump out at you. Why on earth would you take another seven days of risk for nine cents you got rocks in your head to want to do that let's go another seven days out now you're only getting four cents for an extra week of of risk when we sell options we have risk it's not instant income it's instant premium into your account. You have a legal obligation to buy or sell the underlying in exchange for that money that the call or put buyer uh, paid you. 26 days. So, you know, Tasty Trade likes 45 and I just stopped right here. 80 cents. Do you see that? Is, is, that, a, is that a powerful um, slide right there? That's why we love selling. And that goes back to the slide I showed you where theta is falling off a cliff. That, that is theta in action right there. Here's our master trader, um, weekly options trader, 10 days or less. 
we're doing exactly what I just showed you in the last couple of examples. We're looking for compelling patterns and we just sell uh, call or put spreads or even naked and and we put money in our pocket. We have rules for adequate uh, premium and manage in between. Next principle, shorting options after little mini crashes in the spiders. We sell puts on uh, the spiders and calls on volatility ETS, but I'm not gonna get into that today, after sell-offs. Similar to the chart I showed you with market internals where Greg spoke about and we, and we had the market internals in alignment, <clears throat> this is that strategy right now. Tasty Trade, however, they say, hey, when volatility is high, they, they, they sell both call and put options and spreads because they don't have a directional bias. I, I think that's the, the guy blindfolded driving off the cliff. And I'm gonna show you an example to prove it. They frequently take bullish option positions also on volatility ETFs without regard to a directional bias. I have a whole, in fact, their, their cherry bomb today was uh, suggesting putting on a bullish uh, debit spread on one of the volatility ETFs, I forget which, but I, I have a specialty seminar on trading volatility and it's an amazing four hour course, um, 65 slides. And I tell you, it is, it is the best in the industry and using the KISS method, um, but trading volatility is, is not a beginner's game, but using our strategies, the odds are, we put the odds staggering in your favor. These are oversold spiders. Every one of these points, the market internals got oversold. The stock got oversold, volatility exploded. But check this out. At all of these points, we would only, only be selling put spreads here. You do not sell condors in pictures like this, folks. If you understand 10% of what, what Greg and I are, are covering here today, I promise you, you will eliminate a lot of losing trades. It is, I can't say malpractice because they aren't licensed, um, you know, advisors, but it's just preposterous to, to be selling a condors at, at these um, setups. You only want to sell uh, put spreads and then on overbought market internals, you want to do the opposite. You only want to sell call spreads. This was a slide I saw of theirs a, a week or two ago. And this actually, I told you in the intro that I was going to show you a slide, but there's statistics that uh, that is just exhibit A of why, in our opinion, it's extremely misleading. Here we go. Let me walk you through it. It's not as, as, as fearful as it looks. So first of all, what's a strangle? It's selling an out of the money call, an out of the money put. So let me, let me go back to this chart. And they're looking at when volatility is high, selling an out of the money put, out of the, out of the money call. All right, so see all these spots where master trader would only be selling a put. And if they're selling a call, what do you think is gonna happen to that short call? Is it, is it, gonna, is it gonna hurt them, help them or be indifferent? You can answer, but I'm gonna keep going. When, and so here's their volatility now. When, when the VIX is, the, the implied volatility rank is low, 20 to 40, 40 to 60. So here's the high volatility environment, okay? 80 to 100. And that's when I just got through showing you that you should only be selling put spreads. Look folks, their own numbers. Are, are supporting that. Look, these numbers 
are getting lower by selling strangles in high, the higher volatility environments. So you only sell puts or spreads on bullish patterns. You don't, you don't, we don't do anything unless it's confirmed by a chart. When the VIX is high, we make a lot of money at Master Trader on many market crashes when the VIX is high. We, we, we sell puts on these index ETFs. We do them on individual stocks, but come on, common sense with the charts. And look, this declining success rate, it speaks for itself. Stops and adjusting. We're on the uh, the grand finale here, folks. And you know, if I've missed any questions, um, we're we'll answer anybody anytime. Master Trader does not give any trade whatsoever without a protective stop and a plan for position management. I personally have never seen Tasty Trade say, "Hey, we recommend this trade," and you and put a stop here in case it doesn't work. And I, Greg and I came up with this definition of, of what a stop is, and we, we wanted to put it in human terms so you can internalize it, what it really means, and then it becomes your friend, not your enemy. So let's, so let's walk through this definition. What is a protective stop? It is the predetermined line in the sand. I'm going to talk slow because I want you to internalize it. Where we determine that the reason for entering the trade no longer exists. So we exit the trade to preserve our capital and your mind. Folks, how many of you have been in bad trades that you're just watching them, the pain is growing and you're paralyzed and you can't look for new opportunity because you're focused on a bad trade. View stops as, as your rose garden and you're pulling out the weeds. Don't bitch about it. it, it it's a fact of, of, of life. You know, the pilot is going to get bad weather and might have to... Uh, you know, have some mechanical problems and land somewhere else. That's a fact of flying. Taking stops is a fact of trading because charts aren't 100%. But we're in this for the repetitive high success rate where your P&L curve is going up over time. They use the Greeks, research, they, they, they roll. And so here's the example I showed you earlier about NSC. We were in this. We, we, were, we had a put spread on, I forget what number, and we had a stop loss at 181. We got stopped on this bar. Look, folks, we had a, let's just call it a 180 put. This went down $40. We were on to the next trade. And I even think we, we stopped out at a gain because of, I don't have time to give you all quizzes, but the, the Greek that we would have stopped out at a profit is theta because of time decay. This melting ice cube, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days of time decay we, we stopped out either at a small loss, I don't remember for sure, or at a gain. But we surely didn't turn it into a, well, it's not a $40 loss unless you were short the put naked. But if, let's just say you were short a $10 wide put, you would have been, you would have hit your maximum loss if you went into hope mode and roll. We do not do that. Greg, why don't you tell them about this phenomenal course that, that you put together? Yeah, it's amazing. Everybody says so. Well, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but tell them why. Tell, tell them. Well. I, I like it. The, tell them why. Because it puts it all together, meaning 
um, multiple time frames from the point of view of a swing trader. If you're for an intraday trader, you could utilize it, but that's not its focus. Like I said, its focus is swing trading. So multiple time frame analysis, support resistance, candle patterns, understanding them in a simplistic way, money management, trader psychology. You can just go to the site and you know go down to the bottom and look at the modules and 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 what it says. Anything that I'm going to teach is going to be complete based on its focus. It's not where it's okay, now that I bought this, what else do I have to do? You know, to, to be successful at this. Not as far as education. What you have to do is internalize it. And it's like anything else. Theory, experience, you know, getting that experience. And with the markets, you know, someone was typing to me over in, in um, on YouTube there um, and talking about all the BS that's out there with empty promises about stuff, you know, get rich and give me X amount of money. But, um, you know, it's about delivering information that can be used. Now, <clears throat> why can't everybody do this and do it successfully and make gobs of money? It's because it's what's between your ears. First of all, they don't use money management. They just swing for the fences. But, you know, by studying this information, and there are probably people in the room that have taken this course and, and could say something about it from their own point of view uh, as, as to their experience. But once you gathered this information, you know, this is where you start out, okay, let me paper trade for a little while, a little while. And the reason I tell people to paper trade is primarily to just become familiar with their trading platform, not to press the wrong button. You're going to do that, you know, as you become familiar with it, but paper trading for a little while, then start trading with small, small amounts of money that are, that's insignificant to you uh, so that you're not being clouded by, you know, fear and greed and then you start increasing your share size accordingly as you gain confidence in yourself, as well as what you learn in the course. But you begin, you're gaining confidence in yourself and that you've internalized the information long enough that, you know, you know what you're doing. It's like anything else. Go to school, go to college, learn something, go get experience, and you gain confidence in yourself on how to utilize that information. So you learn how to read charts, price patterns, a couple of moving averages, you know, how to incorporate what's happening in the broader markets and market internals for end of day analysis. And with that, and I don't have any affiliation with them, but if you use TC2000, I provide you my swing trading scans so, you know, to help you find the opportunities. Uh, but you're the ultimate filter as to what to trade, but you learn how to manage it, how to enter, how to find the opportunities. You don't need TC2000 to do it. Any charting platform will work, but it's a great scanning platform that I've used for a long, long time. So um, that's it. All right, awesome. Let's continue and then folks, I'll, I'll, we'll get to your remaining questions here. And, and some of you have posted, I'm just a panelist, so We'll do our best to answer everybody. You've seen a couple of examples of these uh, credit spreads I've been talking about. This we have a great, uh, you know, five module course called Silver. But this gold, it took me a year to make. Twelve comprehensive modules. It has changed so many people's lives uh, for the for the positive. Uh, go to the website, please, mastertrader.com forward slash spread trader. Check out the uh, the twelve modules. And it's an amazing way uh, using the master trader strategy to, to make this uh, weekly and monthly income. We still like directional trades, of course, but these are easy to, to find and to place and to manage. And that also includes the, the ones selling on expiration day. The platinum includes at a deeply discounted price, three months to our green trading room and the weekly options trader that I mentioned, which is like the byproduct of, of the course. It, it's you're seeing in real life, the trades that we're doing, that we're teaching you to do. And uh, finally, this is the gift that I mentioned to you. 
we I, I did, made this article for uh, Traders World magazine recently, Profit Blueprint to Selling Options on Expiration Day. I get into much more detail than what I've covered here. I um, have a checklist on what we do. The Spiders, SPY, has multiple expirations during the week, so that's kind of our go-to on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and on quarterlies on Thursday. It's a fantastic tool to sell calls or puts of just calling a short-term top or bottom for the day. You can put it on in the first hour, head off to the golf course, put your stop in, and you either are at max profit or you stop out at, at a small loss. It's a fantastic strategy. A couple questions here um, I'll try to get to. Somebody asked, so I didn't think there would be any quotes for hours to expiration. You better believe it. There, there's the melting ice cube is melting hour by hour within expiration day. Uh, and, and one of our favorite sayings, Gary, is the stock went against me and I still made money. I mean, think, think of that Amazon one we went over. What did I say? $70 away in four hours. That Amazon could go $10 against you every hour from noon till 4 p.m. And you're still making money. That does not exist with trading stocks. Uh, what else here? Um, somebody asked, do you take stops intraday? Absolutely. If we if we put on a trade, regardless, if it hits our stop, we're out. And unless it's a pattern where we say, hey, I wouldn't mind being in this and we roll it to the next week, but we roll intelligently based on the chart pattern and not as a matter of mechanical course. Uh, BG, you type just a panelist, and I'm not, I don't follow you, but I'll go ahead and read your, your question because we don't hide anybody's. You're making it sort of simple, but the strategy terminology doesn't make sense. Call spreads, full call spreads, condor, et cetera. By the way, tasty trade is for kids. Um, I think, well, the terminology is what it is. I, you know, you say it doesn't make sense, but it is what it is. Uh, so feel free to email me if you have any other uh, questions. I'm Dan at MasterTrader.com, Greg at MasterTrader.com. Uh, Rick is asking about a potential. Yeah, Rick, uh, again, he's, he's typing this just to panelists. But Rick is asking, hey, on that Avgo example, does the risk to reward make sense? You took in 650 bucks on a 10 lot, but your max loss is uh, $11,850. Rick, you are 100% correct on the textbook answer. That's the textbook if you suffer maximum loss. Guess what? When you trade the master trader methodology with a stop loss, you will never hit that maximum loss. So that's the same thing as saying, hey, if I buy Apple at 180 bucks, am I really risking 180 bucks a share in case Apple goes to zero. The textbook answer would say yes, but reality would say no. So excellent question. And um, any of our subscribers, we have a very detailed risk management document with three videos in the members area talking about uh, proper management of, of credit spreads. And credit spreads are similar to an insurance company or even casino where they're taking in money, small amounts of money over and over and over again. Yes, you're going to have to pay claims. Yes, we stop out of stocks at losses. But the risk curve, again, is up with an 85% batting average. All right, hope that helps. And all right, so any others? So we're perfect right on time, hour and 15 minutes. I I'm, I'm hope we... Uh, delivered our promise to you that we would, would regardless of, of what, oh, sorry, yeah, <laughs> on the free gift right here, email me, dan at mastertrader.com, and I will send you the article. That is your free gift. Read through it, and uh, you're going to love it. But we appreciate your time today, and our, our promise was that whether you absorb 10% or 100%, I promise you it will improve your future trading and investing. If you incorporate uh, charts and some of these simple concepts 
on technical analysis and even you know proper discipline and emotions that that we've been talking about um, that's all for me greg do you want to say goodbye uh, I'll say good night. Thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have questions, as Dan said, email either one of us. And um, tomorrow, by the way, if you hold on a second, I will give you the link to MT Live. Oh, yeah. Where you can learn a whole bunch more. Just give me a second. We do that every Wednesday and we send out replays for that. So register anyway, even if you can't make it. It's at 12 o'clock on Wednesdays, different subjects on every Wednesday, but they're all great. And here's the link you can register and join us tomorrow. Yeah, it's been, it's fantastic education and you get to, you know, see us in, in real life. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll give you education. Then we look at real charts. And Greg, actually, can you give them the, I didn't give them the green trading room slide. I should have done that. Um, yeah, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. But folks, our green trading room, we give a three-day free trial. And that's another place where you can see Greg and me in real action, interacting with, with our subscribers, giving trade ideas, answering questions, giving market overview, um, scanning for new opportunity. You know, so many people... Uh, you know, teach because they don't know how to trade. And, and, and Greg and I not only enjoy teaching and helping others aspire in the profession that, that we uh, love so much, but it keeps us more current. We enjoy it, but uh, we, we walk the talk also. So uh, check us out in the green trading room. Thank you, Peter. And yeah, many of you have thanked us here. Uh, and thank you very much, even though you're just typing to all panelists. Appreciate all the positive uh, comments there. And I hope if you're new to Master Trader, I hope this is a start. Go to our website. We have a free chart of the week and you get free lessons on that. And the MT Live, even if you aren't a subscriber, we will answer your emails and do what we can to help you succeed in this marvelous business. All right. Thank you all. And there's the link for the green trading room for a, a three day free trial. Good trading, everyone. Thanks again. And until next time, we will see you soon.